What up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh and I'm back with a brand new video here today. I'm starting off a series, an analysis of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'm going to have the movie playing and I'm going to be breaking down the film itself, talking about why certain parts work and why a lot of it doesn't work at all. And really, um, this is going to be a follow-up to the Force Awakens analysis I did, but it's in a different format. I think this format will be better. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this video. I'll also be doing it with my sister who's sitting with me and we'll talk about the film itself. And in the comment section down below, also let me know what you think about certain scenes that we're exploring. But anyhow, I hope to get through this within about three or four parts. But without further ado, let's get started. So we're about to start watching this movie. Um, the TV is flashing a little bit. You're gonna have to deal with that because obviously the camera can't record the best of a screen and such But if I had a second camera set up, I would record my face as well But I think it'll be more interesting for you all to see the screen in the movie itself and just hear our audio commentary over the top and analysis of the film itself So let's get started Just, just the, bad the bad outweigh the good exactly. Yeah So what are you supposed to do, you know? And it's like, this is a really good looking Star Wars movie. Yeah. Well, you can, you can comment as much as you want. So I put subtitles on as well, just in case I had to turn down the volume a little bit. We'll see. I can't make it too loud. Episode 8. Oh, the last Jedi. Hey, I'm definitely going to be talking about this. So the First Order reigns. Having decimated the peaceful Republic, Supreme Leader Snoke now deploys his merciless legions to seize military control of the galaxy. So wait, I'm, i got to pause it here already. I have to pause already? it here already. Yeah, 51 seconds in and I'm pausing it already. The First Order reigns. So the First Order is apparently in power for some reason, even though their, their planet where they have their base of operations was destroyed, but it's because they, destroyed they still the reign. They destroyed the Republic, sure, but the Resistance still lives throughout the galaxy. And the First Order didn't control any portion of the galaxy. So even if the New Republic controlled the galaxy per se, there would still be um, planets that are loyal to them. Yeah. Planets have their own military strength. Planets have all these other concepts and they follow the New Republic. They're not going to just bow down to the First Order, for the most part. Based on the movie itself, don't tell me if there's a comic or book out there, because I know there are some which may explore this and do explore this. I'm just focusing on the movie here. So then, if the First Order reigns, why is Snoke deploying his, um, his goons or whatever, I can't read the word, to seize military control of the galaxy when the first line already says that they reign? You know? It just, yeah. it just doesn't work like that. But Only also, it's oh, just yeah. like the three planets or however many planets that were destroyed just because they're gone surely the Republic consists of more like yeah that's the three main planets but surely the Republic consists of more than just those three yeah, yeah surely it does because it's like the Senate back in we saw the Senate in the um, prequel trilogy thousands and thousands, thousands, and thousands of planets were yeah. there so it doesn't really make much sense I'm gonna pause here just in case we missed anything from that yeah. but it doesn't make sense that there'd be the whole galaxy would be in turmoil all of a sudden now that the first order supreme so apparently reigns over like you, you got the first thing you're going to compare it to is the death star and a new hope it blew up just like star killer base but the emperor was still around empire was still around sorry in episode five yeah. but the thing is the empire controlled the galaxy the first order did not so that's completely different and then you're looking here the first resistance has been exposed as the first order speeds toward the rebel base a brave our brave heroes mount a desperate escape but the thing is we know for a fact that between episode seven and eight they had a funeral for han solo and who knows what else they did so if they truly, I think it's cool that they have a funeral for Han Solo, even though it's not in the film and stuff. Yeah, but if but they had the time, if they to, do had that, the time to do that, they surely had enough time to properly escape. As in, like, if you know, if the if the first order was speeding towards them, they shouldn't have had the funeral straight away. Like, yeah, obviously, you know, have start, it, have it, but have it at a later time when you're yeah. not in. When you yeah, got, you can like, go danger. somewhere safe, then have it. Because you Cause in the, that could have like that they could have used that time to get further away. Yeah, they could have used that time to further away, and then this whole thing does it just doesn't make sense because yeah. you know the whole the whoever's in charge, sadly it's Leia for currently, 
just for some reason let her personal feelings get in the way. I don't know, it doesn't make sense, to be honest. But that's a small issue. Thing. But see, it just, we're already complaining yeah. so much. We shouldn't complain this much. We're not so. complaining. We're analyzing. We're okay. breaking down. Yeah. You know, because okay. in the end of the Force Awakens, towards the end, not even in the final few minutes, towards the end, 15, 20 minutes, they say that they know they know where our base is. Should start operations packing up already. Yeah. You know, if that was the case, then Han Solo's funeral makes sense. Mm. But we don't see them packing up in the Force Awakens, and we don't see Han Solo's funeral. Anyway, but this is cool because this, yeah, room, I, like this I was like, oh, how are they transitioning down? And then they do this and it's really cool. So you see all the ships and everything. It's nice. It's a cool shot. It's a cool shot. There's no time, but we had a funeral. Guns and shields in attack mode. <laughs> I love that. Oh god. I thought this was pretty cool when I was building up to it. I was like, okay, this is gonna be badass. I have a bad feeling about this. That's what BB-8 says there. Oh really? Yeah. So do I, BB-8. <laughs> oh, happy beeps. Yeah, Poe Dameron, he's, he's a cool character. Sadly, we'll get into it, more into it later. He says general hugs. <laughs> oh god, I didn't pick up on that the first time, but it's just... It's funny. It's, it's funny, but it just irritates me how you don't pick it up. Because you can't, it's hard. Good and... Yeah, I know, but it's just like making light of the situation and then you get this. And he says, he said it a second time. This is the same First Order which reigns over the galaxy, apparently, yeah. yet this is how they were shown that they must be treated by the Resistance. Hugs. Mm -hmm. Do we remember what this guy was like in The Force Awakens? It's, it's completely different. Oh my god. See, I would have no problem if Poe did something like this to buy time and he didn't mention the mother because Star Wars is no place for your mother jokes and he didn't say the whole hugs thing several times and do it the whole whole thing several times because it drags on a bit too much. But this type of comedy works because it's something Han Solo could do. But the problem is the way it's done with the mother joke and the things I just listed, it doesn't work all that well. And but this moment I do like. We have Poe flying about and he's taking down the it shows, turrets. You know, it's that whole thing about you know how good of a pilot he is. Yeah, the best he's pilot in the resistance. The best pilot in the exactly. And we know he helped take down Starkiller Base. We know he's one of the best. But then, yeah, it just this doesn't make sense. Too small and at too close of range, yet the Tyrants on the Death Star and Starkiller base were able to shoot down ships at a closer range. This bit's cool too. This bit? Yeah. I like how he comes down into the ship itself. Yeah. I think that's a cool idea. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, not gonna lie, a lot of these moments got a, a few laughs in, in the cinema the several times I watched it and yeah. stuff. But this got a... this was a bit... a bit... it's fine, I think. I think when I, when I put it together with everything else, yeah. it feels like it's a lot, but on its own, this joke that's coming up is fine. Just got a shot of all the ships that were there. And you can't see any of the bombers, you can't see any of the A-wings. I think that's a cool shot. Yeah. It makes me question what the TIE fighter pilot was thinking, but <laughs> it's a cool shot. Why are they disobeying Leia's orders as well? Yeah, they they can easily be like, no, we're not going to disobey the orders. But here's the weird thing: they all come, of them are disobeying. They come out of nowhere as well. You see that the whole space? They're in space, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where the hell did they come from? <laughs> they're so slow moving, so they couldn't have just, you know, come out of nowhere. They could have come from hyperspace. But where the hell would they have come from in hyperspace? You know, we don't see them come out of hyperspace or anything. So then they clearly were there the whole time, but they're so slow they didn't come straight from the ship. Because look how far they came. And look how slow they're moving. So they just popped out of nowhere. No one seemed to notice them for some reason. That's a huge problem with them. And look how defenseless they are. How, oh. 
plan. All the it, TIE fighters have to do is just shoot. It's not a good at plan at all. It's like one bomb goes off and then all of them will go off. Yeah, and that's what happens. One tie, stray TIE fighter accidentally gets shot, I'm pretty sure, destroys a ship, and it dirt bl blows three of the ships up. We'll see soon. It just doesn't. And look how boring these shots are. They're all like slow pans or slow tilts of the ships itself moving. They're nothing really interesting following the ships in space. Like how Poe was moving so cool and the camera was following him a little more. Yeah. If you compare this mostly to Revenge of the Sith opening and you're like, wow. See, look, it's a stray, a stray one that hits it. And oh my God. Like as if you wouldn't use Y-wings or even B-wings or anything like that that we know can carry some sort of bombing equipment to destroy the Dreadnought. It just doesn't make much sense at all. What's her name? Paige? I'm pretty sure her name is Paige. Yeah. Here's what I don't get. How has no one destroyed that last bomber yet? Right. You don't even need to shoot it. You just need to crash into it. Like we just seen. One half of a wing can crash and you're all good. So here's the interesting thing. Why if she because the pilot was I can assume the pilot didn't respond because he's dead but what I find interesting oh the pilot is not dead what do you know what I find interesting though oh this part actually I'll get into my thing in a second this part makes no sense at all yeah. so look how she's facing her back is towards the um, dreadnought yeah? yeah okay and Wait, is that? yeah her back so she's facing upwards yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and she, look at the look at the space she's on yeah she can just fit on it for the most part yeah She's kicking it off, she's kicking it off. Somehow, none of the things, shots from the TIE fighters can kill it. It doesn't make any sense at all. But, I think the moment of build-up, the idea there is good. But there's this one thing that bugs the hell out of me. Apart from the fact that the bombers are still around, and they're not, it's not shot out of the sky yet. Just because this is happening in slow motion, doesn't mean it re in reality it is. So it falls down, and it falls past her. Yet somehow, before it reaches too far out, her body is able to go, so it's facing down, she's facing down now. But you saw how much space she has. She, there's no way she was able to realistically turn around and grab the remote. Just because the remote's falling in slow motion doesn't mean everything is happening slowly. Yeah. You know, that's not how it works at all. And she shouldn't have been able to grab it in time. It would have been cool, I think this would have been way cooler if she jumped out after it Make her an alien species so she can breathe in space for a little longer. Yeah. And then she grabs it as she's falling and then she falls into the dreadnought with the bombs. That I think that would look cool. way cooler yeah. and it would have made more sense. Way more sense. But we got this instead. Why are they happy? <laughs> because I took it because I don't think it hurt. Oh. But didn't they all hear Leia say, that's an order, don't go destroy the dreadnought? Yeah. It's as it like... <sighs> But Poe's the only one who's going to get blamed for it. Right. You know? Everyone. But still, it looks amazing, this. Can't get over that. Like, they're all happy, but aren't they sad that all those people just died as well? Yeah, no one seems to be paid that. This looks cool. Yeah. That show where the X-Wing came in looked yeah. amazing. Oh, my. How can you take this guy as a villain seriously? But it just, how can you take, I need to pause this for a second before we go too far. I need to pause it. What are we, 12 minutes in and look at this. non-stop. Yeah, because this is why I'm breaking this down. I'm explaining know, it, you know, that. this is what we're meant to do, I you know. That, yeah. So here's the thing, how can, so I already said that the First Order reigns. How can we take the First Order seriously when the general is treated the way he is? Yeah. And furthermore, when his superior take, treats him the way, that way, like throws him down and slides him across using the force. Um, doing like just like that it doesn't make any sense at all why that would be a smart thing to do you don't see the emperor do it to vader in the original trilogy you don't see palpatine do it to anyone else during the prequel trilogy yeah, yeah? because we know that you have to make an opponent somewhat um, menacing to be the antagonist and this completely contradicts what happened in the opening crawl and just sets up the f rest of the film for us not really caring about Hux and taking him seriously and 
not really taking the first order seriously. So I'm just going to play for a bit more and we'll probably end this first episode or this first part soon. Finn Awakens. Which doesn't make sense at all. Why the hell does he wake up? It's been a few hours since he knocked out. He was knocked out. I like how he opens saying Ray. That's a nice touch. But the thing is, he's, he was so hurt from the lightsaber battle that he blacked out. And that's not something we really see. That joke was also way too forced. And so he was so hurt from the lightsaber battle, he blacked out. He was, for whatever reason, couldn't hear, do anything. Sliced straight up his back. Which we don't ever see in any other lightsaber battle on the top of my head, I can't remember. But he's just awake a few hours later, and he's walking around like that. Are, like, around. Yeah. A guy at the back shack actually almost slips on the water. Why is no one treating this guy? You're all happy, no one's taking this rush seriously. If all things just me questioning about this scene itself, one thing I love is this transition. Yeah. Where's Ray? And we go here. This music is amazing. The, the cinematography with this it. is so good. It's so pretty. Yeah, it just looks amazing. It, the, one thing I'm questioning now is that we see like a sunset and then now it's all of a sudden midday or something, you know? Oh my god, wait. Okay, this moment. This was supposed to be the most epic moment ever. One of my favorite Star Wars moments is the end of The Force Awakens, yeah. you know? And it, was, it was so like so many emotions going like that we thought were what's, going through his what's head, he gonna right? do with his old lightsaber with his father's lightsaber and oh it's just so well set up yeah i when watching this i was just like oh my god it's happening what's he gonna do how's how's this all gonna happen and then you get that <sighs> I, I was so I disappointed and I so angry the first it. time I saw it. It doesn't make any sense at all for his character to do this. Mm. Sure, with no the matter, history. Yeah, even do, like no matter what he's gone through, yeah. still for him to do that, you know. You yeah, know, it's it's his father's lightsaber. Yeah. It's his lightsaber. As much Does this as, not remind know, him of Obi Wan? Yeah, as much as his relationship with the Force might have changed, that doesn't mean his relationship with his father. Yeah, with his father. Has yeah. Changed. With his memories of that time, yeah. you know, with the journeys he could have had in between movies that we might not have seen. Because as far as we're aware, he distanced himself from the Force maybe a few years before The Force Awakens. So there's still roughly 20 years or so with which he had journeys and he had mm -hmm. some positive sort of environment. Yet somehow it was just all completely negated yeah. and he just throws the lightsaber away. And it's all done for a laugh. I don't think... I think maybe two or three people laughed in the first time we saw this. So we saw this a few times. Alright, this is probably like close to a tenth watching of this. But it doesn't make sense. See, this is what I really liked. That's His cool. X-Wing is crashed. And in one of my videos where I talk about why Luke doesn't work in The Last Jedi, I talk about how the crashed X-Wing could have been a reason for why he didn't come back to help the resistance. Is it crashed or did he put it in water? He might have put it there, but I say it crashed and it's damaged that he can't repair it. Because look at the island. Where's the technology? Why is Ray translating for Chewbacca when we know Luke can understand Chewie? We have another similar transition to before, which is good. You know, I really like these type of transitions, you know? Mm -hmm. Just look at this set design. This is an amazingly well-designed set. We will see later on that it's very impractical in a fight. But at the same time, I don't think they ever planned on having explosions and fires in this room. Yeah. You would have precautions for it, basically. But he calls the mighty Kylo Ren, bested by Rey, raw untamed power. Oh my god. Because none of it makes sense. From what we've seen of Kylo Ren, that's nothing that describes him. Despite everything that is kind of wrong with Kylo Ren and how he's not really been that uh, much of a imposing villain, he's very human and that's like something that. we can always appreciate. I yeah. like that he's struggling. Like, like usually people pull the, feel the pull to the 
usually people feel the pull to the dark side. Yeah. But he's feeling the pull to the light. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's he's torn between two worlds, yeah, and I, they I like they that. they bring it up here and everything, and it's. Yeah, what he says here, the deed split your spirit to the bone. And that's that's really cool to explore. It reminds me, it's like a mashup between Darth Maul from the Clone Wars animated series and Darth Vader itself from the original trilogy. Why is he so much more powerful than others? Like, then, like we will never know unless they go into like flashbacks in, some, in the next episode. Yeah, unless they go into flashbacks in absolutely, the next episode, we won't know. Like, Snoke does absolutely nothing. Yeah. He can it's, use force lightning like that hits the ground first, which is cool. It's fine, but that, what? Like, it, he was built up in the in the Force Awakens. Like, yeah. He didn't do anything, but I expected him to do have more of a role. Yeah. In this, episode, in this yeah. This is good symbolism and everything. I like Sadly, this. it contra- I like it contradicts Ren, a Kylo lot, Ren's but character. it contradicts a lot with the Force Awakens, though, because in the Force Awakens he was so obsessed with Vader. This one pep talk by Snoke is enough to so break him out. On top of the fact that he killed, he just killed his father a few hours ago. Yeah. It's still fresh. Did you hear what I just said? That sounds like something out of a Marvel joke. I'll say he called it a laser sword. Why? I know, I get why Anakin, as a kid on Tatooine, might say laser sword, because he's a slave on Tatooine in the Outer Rim. But, like, Luke knows it's called a lightsaber. Luke knows it's called a lightsaber. Him calling it a laser sword is a way to, say, um, dumb down the idea of a lightsaber itself. In, in that respect, in that perspective, sorry, it makes sense, you know? Yeah, I get why he would true. do it. So, I don't have too much of a problem with that. Okay. I like the island itself. The island itself is really beautiful, mm. you know? It's just cool to see a lot of the shots of it are really well done. Some aspects of the island are pretty poor. Um, <laughs> like this, which... Nice transition. I don't get why... I don't get why this was in this at all. You know, I like, can... Like, what purpose does that play? Yeah, what, what's the purpose of it? Yeah, I understand and why... why does he look at her and drink it? That's just weird. And yeah. It's just to show us how... Oh, it doesn't make... No, it's to show us how far Luke's gone or how, you know, pointless his life is now, what he's rendered himself to. But the fact that they actually lifted that type of animatronic monster all the way to this island just for that, I get why you might show him doing all this. This is cool. But the thing is, at this point in time, I remember the first time I saw this, I was questioning why Luke just used that to get across. No, he used it to... Yeah, but he, he can just force jump across or he can just, you know, force pull something, you know? He's disconnected himself from the Yeah, but at the so time we don't know this, Ben, yeah? Yeah, but afterwards you know that. After, I know, but the, I said it the first time I was watching this, oh, yeah? okay. So, yeah, this all happens. And it's fine having all this part. I don't get why you get the green milk part. Because this just shows us what he's been doing, what he's up to, yeah? It's meant to hint to us the fact that, you know, he hasn't, he's disconnected or he's not doing anything really. Also, I don't like the fact that Chewie is just not doing anything. I know, Chewie's just there, but they, he's not trying Luke to do have anything. such a good relationship. Yeah. They haven't seen each other for how many years? It would have been several and years, he, yeah. And he's just, most of the time, he's just sat inside. And he's just, yeah, he's at the Falcon. For some reason, Ray's the only one chasing after him, which doesn't make sense. You know, R2 is also here. We know R2 is here. But why isn't R2 or Chewbacca coming to try to stop him? This part I did like because, in fact, the whispers are apparently the, um, the Jedi oath. Uh-huh. So there is no whatever. There's peace and stuff like that. There is only the Force. Whatever I can't remember which part it is, but it's one of the parts this of that. Is a cool bit. Yeah. The whole Jedi tree aspect. It's a nice part because this is meant to be the first Jedi temple, so you don't expect it to be. Well, it could have gone two ways. It could have been this really elaborate and grand. Temple, I like the fact that it's simple. but a nice simple one also works because if it was, it would have just started off as a simple small order per se, one or two people, or I don't know however many people it could be. But so the, this makes sense, you know, not having a grand one also works. But yeah, I don't understand why Ray's so hesitant to tell him. Yeah, because in the last movie, in The Force Awakens, she was so eager to find him and share. 
And that joke also felt very forced, mm-hmm. you know? That's why she's so hesitant. In the last movie, she couldn't help but find Luke. She couldn't help but find that yeah. figure and learn more. She was a little scared, obviously. But by the end of it, she was like, I want to go do this. And in the, in the start of this, she was like trying to follow him and find it. I guess it's because but it's So like, she's so afraid to say anything. when she's first met him, he's not what she expected him to be. So yeah. maybe that's why she's hesitant. But she was following him like for the past day or so. And now she's hesitant to tell him? What was she going to say when she, when he, if he took the lightsaber and he was like, where did you get this? Or whatever, he started a conversation. What would she have said? Would she have been like, I'm from nowhere? Do not train another generation of Jedi. See, why is he the only one who's demoted? No? It's a good lesson to be learned. I think he's still a leader. He does no one remember that he just blew up a star killer base a few no, hours ago. Is, like his characters changed so much in the in the span of a few hours. Yeah, he suddenly he wasn't he was much of a hot he was a hot shot sure, but, but he, he wasn't, wasn't like he cared for his people. He cared for Finn, and he met him for only like a few minutes. So why wouldn't he care for like all the other people? Ah, uh, Admiral Akbar. Oh, if only we saw more. See, I think this is really, this is a really interesting moment because he just adds another problem and he creates that whole issue of like, oh, the whole intrigue of what is going on, what's happening. Hey, that's the ring that she has in the Rise of Skywalker trailer. Is Yeah. told you can't just jump in an next thing and blow something up but then he's slow a few minutes later not even he's justified to go and do just that yeah so like it's it the, doesn't it's really situation. it doesn't really work yeah so it's the situation so why wasn't the other situation all that justified because if he didn't blow up the dreadnought then they would have just been followed here at light speed and the dreadnought would be here in time to blow them up anyway yeah but they would have more people and they would have all the bombers but they would have nowhere to hide there would be no base to attack it'd just be the ships so then why why are you so angry at him you should have realized wait if Poe didn't do what he did we all would have definitely died because there would have been no other target and here's another question so they sent three TIE fighters I think that was and Kylo Ren to go and attack these (laughs) I love that now this is pod racing um, this is cool how he gets in here. I don't get how he, um, like, why that's a design that you can just enter. And this I also don't get. Everyone seems to die except Poe, who gets blown back by the explosion. BB-8 also seems to survive, but no one else survived apart from them too. Is this just a huge coincidence? That looks beautiful though. That was a cool shot. And I have no problem with how Kylo Ren get out, cause it got out because as you can see, there were a few empty sides to the side where Kylo Ren could easily just quickly get out through after he fired. <coughs> see, look, three, three fighters we see from the First Order, but they have how many Star Destroyers there carrying how many fighters? Aww. This is a beautiful moment. The connection between the two being explored and just the the way it's being shown is really well done. You're really unsure whether or not Kylo Ren's actually going to do it or not. Yeah. Is he actually going to fully commit to the dark side and become the villain? No. That use of silence as well is really well done. He's just lost every like his family. Yeah. Like his he that's his mindset. Does he know that Leia survived? Um. Surely he can feel it. I assume he can feel it. But here's another question. That's exactly right. They can be 
faster and lighter. It, what? You have how many ships and you have so many TIE fighters which are clearly able to go that same speed. Why not just send out more fighters, you know? Yeah, exactly. Send out all your fighters. Why does it have to be so fast? Yeah. And we know that they maintain the same distance. So then why can't they cover the fighters at that same distance like they just were doing? Because they still fight, they can still fire up on the ship. So why can't they cover their own fighters? Almost really well done moment. Because the only one thing that ruins it is kind of the, the way that it's shot. The way this part is this fine, is so this part is fine. I, it gives me that style of advice. But this way, why would they shoot it like this? Because it, it, the way that she's moving doesn't seem really... It feels very out of place and very fake. And something about it just doesn't work. I think it would have been better if they had a dolly zoom on her face and have the background suddenly shift from the outside of space towards the inside of the ship. And then you can do the same kind of thing happen. Have the same kind of thing happen, sorry. I love how the other resistance pilots and stuff in the back were just casually chatting as Leia just came from outer space. <laughs> like, no one's really just shocked by that. Day. Yeah, like, just, why just another. Why sitting here and not with Luke? Yeah, why, why is Chewie so far yeah. away? Does someone really have to take care of the, the Falcon? And also... This part, this part is really cute and very fun and... It'd be cool if it was in like, in like a short or something. But the problem I have is that they say that the porgs are necessary because you have all these birds flying around the ship, uh, the planet, the island, sorry, in real life. But then here's the problem. You don't need to actually focus on the porgs though. You can still have birds fly around the island, but you don't need to focus on them. They can just say that there are porgs there flying around the island. That's the native species. And that's the end of it. You don't have to have all these moments and force them into the story. Because it would have been a really cool or better transition, I think, if it went from Leia using the Force to Luke getting back into the idea of teaching it. Yeah, and the dice again. The dice, yeah, the dice come up for the first time that we see them. We've seen them since the, A New Hope. Um, they have some sort of significance. But here's R2, for some reason, he's just sitting here. I don't know why he wouldn't have gone out earlier to go and see Luke. But look at how happy our, our Luke is, you know? That's what I really love. Mark Hamill gave a great job at breaking this down. And this whole scene in general is really good. And the comedy is, it just all works because it's, it's the type of, too. yeah, it's a type of comedy. It's a type of style that you should have in a Star Wars movie. But it makes me question why didn't this happen at a different part or early on in the movie? <laughs> I love R2's <laughs> turning around of the head. Because this, this moment is actually genuinely a really smart moment to try to get Luke back into the fight. And at this point, we have to accept the fact that he is not going to come back. And I'm, I'm going to try to move on from that. R2 saying, like, you're our only hope. Yeah. See, here's a question. I don't know why they cut off the third lesson, but they kept that pork joke in and they keep... A few other scenes in, it doesn't... It makes me question a lot. I can't believe Edward Akbar just died like that. Like, it's true, he was mostly a meme. He was mostly a joke. He said it's a trap and it was very iconic and everything. But that doesn't mean that his character was beloved. And just having him die in the background, just have that one standoff for him. A lot of people really loved Akbar on the level of some of the main characters. So, why wouldn't we get some sort of more tributing death to him? I will talk later on about Holdo and her death, but for now, let's just watch this a bit. The very last of the resistance, yet they're gonna. The very last of the resistance that they're gonna hope. In, what? We're the last of the resistance, but in the other corners of the galaxy, there are other people who know our symbol. What about? The Republic, isn't the Republic yeah. the main, that's what confuses me. Yeah, like, so. Like it's, it's portraying the resistance as this, it's portraying the resistance as like the, like the Rebel Alliance when it's not there, the Republic is in power now. Yeah. Like the resistance is in power now. Just because the government itself is gone doesn't mean the planets don't have their own, like, you know, small council or any sort of people. Like look at Naboo, yeah. a great example. 
they had a queen, but they also had a senator. Yeah. So why aren't there more planets out there that, that would support the resistance? Why is she showing such attitude to Poe? No, actually, her last official act was to send out their fleet to go and fight the First Order and let Poe get into a cockpit and blow something up, just in case people didn't notice. But what is her orders? Yeah. That's what he's asking her. You know, he's asking her for orders. He's asking her for a plan. And that's, that's what we're trying to get at. All right, I'm going to pause it here. We have got, got through a good chunk of the film itself here, I think. And I'm going to just end this part here or whatever. If this carries on with the first part, if this carries on to the second part, I don't know. But my camera battery is actually running low. I forgot to charge it. So I'm going to have to quickly end this part here. We've gone through about 38 minutes of the film itself. Hopefully you're liking this commentary. I would say it's more of a commentary than an analysis. We're more so just commentating on the film and criticizing it. Who knows what I'll put down in the actual um, title itself. But nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed this part. Let me know if you agree or disagree with some of the things we've said. Um, and just, you know, leave a like button and subscribe to my channel for the next few parts of this commentary. And until next time, I'll see you guys.